Considering heart disease is our number one killer, I want to talk to you today about a very important link between heart disease and having acid reflux. Now, those of you who have suffered with uh, heartburn, I mean, it's called heartburn, right? Um, and there's, there's actually something uh, that was discovered back in 1962, and it was called linked angina. So angina is that pain that uh, patients with cardiovascular disease suffer from and it's a you know it's chest pain it's a squeezing it's they, you know people are talk about it uh, heaviness in their chest they describe it in different ways um, but it's very much associated with the heart so back in 1962 Smith and Papp researchers coined a term linked angina and so what they were talking about is that patients with with cardiovascular disease can have angina uh, or chest-like pain that wasn't associated with their heart, it was associated with their esophagus. So they called it linked because what they discovered with and further research supported this is that the there is a what's called a cardio, meaning heart, esophageal reflex. And, and that is a link that is neurological. So it's through the nervous system between the heart and the esophagus where if you're stimulating one organ like the esophagus, you can feel it in with heart symptoms and, and vice versa. So uh, they called this linked angina. And again, this was discovered back in 1962. Now a brand new study that's just been published in the American Journal of Medicine, they wanted to look at um, a large population, and they looked at patients that um, that had uh, cardiovascular disease, and they looked at a group with acid reflux and a group without acid reflux, and then they also looked at patients on a PPI. So they looked at all three, and what they found was that there is uh, an increased risk of having a myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack if you're someone who has GERD or has acid reflux. And that, and they followed these patients, it was a large population study, they followed these patients for more than three years. And then they also added that being on a PPI for more than a year had a marginal change in this. It did not perform, uh, provide uh, much of any protection. Now, in addition to that, a lot of other studies have shown that there's increased risk of myocardial infarction with a PPI. And I've talked about this for a long time because what we know that happens, what PPIs do is they kind of annihilate the nitric oxide in our, in our bodies. And nitric oxide is very important for keeping uh, the blood vessels dilated, keeping blood pressure down, uh, preventing uh, arterial clogging uh, clots from occurring. And um, it just, you know, regulates your blood pressure, dilates um, your your arteries so that your heart is getting good oxygenation. So we know that dangerous association already, which is why PPIs are associated with uh, stroke. But this particular study was looking at uh, heart attacks and showing an increased risk if you suffer from GERD, if you have gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, let's see what else I wanted to talk to you about. The other thing was that um, acid in the esophagus is associated with less coronary blood flow, so less good oxygenated blood going to your heart because of this reflex. The you know Think of the acid, of course it's not supposed to be in your esophagus, it's supposed to stay in your stomach, and you've got this caustic acid coming up into your esophagus and, and the body is reacting, and that, you know, almost that stricture of the esophagus is also happening in the heart, lessening your, your blood flow. So um, scary, I know, but, but also fascinating, and, and not to worry because there's, we can get to the root cause here. And no, the PPIs are not the answer, they're, they're more of the problem. Okay, what else? Um, acid in the esophagus can lower heart rate, 
They found that uh, dysphagia or trouble swallowing, because if you've had a lot of reflux, yeah, a lot of reflux in your esophagus, the esophagus gets so irritated it starts to narrow. The diameter of the esophagus starts to narrow, and you can have uh, trouble swallowing. And that, again, by this reflex, is associated with heart arrhythmias, and that's where people feel their heart is, you know, not not doing that nice regular lub-dub, lub-dub, uh, but it, you know, it feels like it skips a beat, it flip-flops, and this again is associated with this reflex between the heart and the esophagus, and also associating the esophagus with uh, being irritated from the GERD by um, associated with AFib because the esophagus is very near um, the left atrium of the heart, which is the upper valve, the upper ventricle, you've got an atrium and a ventricle, the upper uh, quadrant, I should say, of the heart. So you have, um, there's there's a left side and a right side, and the heart's a little bit on an angle, so the, the left atrium's a little bit higher than, than the right atrium. But the fact is that it's it's in close proximity. So, so often patients, you know, come and say, you know, I told my cardiologist, I think, you know, or my gastroenterologist, you know, one or the other, like, I think these things are related. What I'm feeling with my heart feels related to my digestion, and my di digestion is related to my heart. And so often patients are told, you know, that's complete nonsense. They're, they're nowhere close to each other. I've heard that before, which is just anatomically incorrect. But the fact that there is a neurological reflex between the esophagus and the heart and all of these associations that happen uh, between the esophagus being irritated and your heart is is been so well proven and so uh, I've talked about this in the past but this brand new study uh, was just really hit me really struck me because they they looked at a, a large population of individuals only to find out that those with with GERD uh, had an increased risk of having a heart attack than patients uh, without GERD who also had some heart issues, um, but the, the risk was higher due to having GERD. So um, don't freak out if, if this is you. All, all it means is we have to get to the root cause of why your stomach is, is being compressed and bringing that acid up into your esophagus because that's not the normal flow right? Food flows down your esophagus into your stomach. Your stomach is a bag of acid. It churns the food around and then it deposits that um, somewhat broken down food into your small intestine where the rest of digestion and absorption takes place. So it's, it's a very smooth system and a very beautiful, exquisitely intricate system. But what is absolutely not designed to happen is that the stomach gets compressed such that it has no choice but to bring its contents, acid, up into the esophagus. It's not normal. It's not due to excess acid. It's due to inflammation, imbalance in your gut that's causing this compression on your stomach. Uh, I call it increased uh, intra-abdominal pressure. And it's coming from usually a few different sources. That's what we identify. That's our specialty. So um, I've always known, as I mentioned, that PPIs put you at risk for um, increased uh, risk of stroke and, and heart disease. So I knew the PPI asso association, but uh, I, just the fact that you have GERD putting you at, risk, at higher risk to have a myocardial infarction, which is a heart attack, uh, to this degree is, is new for me as well. So this is, this is a brand new study, and we really have to take heed of what this means and, you know, not ignore it, not listen to and I'm sorry, I don't mean to say not listen to your doctor, but there's a lot of gastroenterologists out there who just say, take the PPI, it's fine. Yeah, no, you can stay on it for years. 
decades. It's fine. And it's so not fine um, because the, the, the PPI is worsening the situation, as I mentioned, not bettering it. And I'll put all the research. I normally don't get heavy into the names of, of research studies, etc. But because um, this video is really focusing on, I'll put, I'll put the list of all the research studies in, in the um, description of this video so you can have them if, if you want to seek them out. Um, but it's pretty overwhelming, so I wanted to share that with you. And please know that if you have reflux, uh, there's, there's definitely natural solutions. We do it all the time here at the clinic. We can find out if you're a good fit for what we do. We will honestly let you know if you're a good fit or not. We do turn away patients who we don't think for whatever reason are a good fit for our program. But the good news is most people are and they do very well. And, and you deserve this because we don't need something else aggravating the number one killer in our country, which is heart disease. Okay, we'll talk soon.